Hey, good morning, New Life. My name is Eris, and I am part of the Next Gen team that helps kick off Sunday morning services for our kindergartners through sixth graders at New Life. And I'm really glad you've decided to tune in this morning. I have some thoughts to share with you about communion, but before I do that, I'd like to actually tie them in by giving you a little bit of a sneak peek into what it's like to actually kick off that Sunday morning service for those kids. We call it our countdown time. So picture the scene with me, if you will. I am on the stage on our secondary auditorium. Next to me is my buddy Tim. In the back is John, who handles our audio and visual type things. And above us is a ginormous countdown timer. So it's a big three zero getting ready to count down. Now, of course, before we do a countdown, we've got to have some upbeat music, right? So John turns the music on, the countdown timer starts going, and Tim and I are ready to go. 30, 29, 28. We're actually counting down out loud. The kids hear that. They hear the music. They know what's going on. It is large group time. 27, 26, 25. They're starting to come in from all the different parts of the room and even the room next door. 24, 23, 22. By now, they're all kind of gathered in the area they're supposed to be at, and they're actually counting out loud with us. 21. 20, 19, and they're getting rowdy, you know, not, not too rowdy, but, you know, excited, right? And they're still counting down with us. 18, 17, 16, and I'm getting pumped because I love to see kids get excited about being at church. 15, 14, you know why they're so excited? It's because they know what's coming. They know our Sunday morning routine, sometimes better than we know it ourselves, and they're excited. 13, 12, it's all about anticipation, right? Um, just looking forward to what's ahead because you know what's coming. 11, 10, whew, and I'm getting a little bit out of breath, so I'm going to take a minute and slow down, but stay with me, okay? Um, can you picture another group of people that might be just as excited about the fact that the service is about to start in new life? So picture the scene in heaven with me, if you will. God's on his throne, you know, one of those cool Lord of the Rings movie type thrones, right? Um, Jesus is there, of course. Peter's running in the door, Peter the Apostle. He's running late because he was just finishing up a game of Bible Pictionary with Moses. But he knows what time it is, and he doesn't want to miss the start of our service. Nine, eight, seven, and they're all gathered around. Even the angels are there. They're gathered around their kajillion, million, whatever inch, LCD, TV, LED, whatever it is. It's the latest and greatest. And they're excited. Our service is about to start. The Bible tells us that God's excited to spend time with his kids and wants to spend time with them. Six, five, four. Now, I'm just imagining what it could be like, but perhaps it's not so far from what it really is like up there. God looks forward to being with us, and he loves it when we look forward to being with him. He wants us to celebrate. He wants us to be thankful. And isn't that really what communion is all about? Whether you're gathered in a family setting around your laptop or your TV screen, or maybe you're in your pajamas in bed on, on your computer, uh, whether you were, like myself, born in a foreign land or born here in the States, regardless of of your age, your, your skin color, your gender, your political affiliation, you can connect right now with God. That is communion. So here's the rest of our countdown. Are you guys ready? Three, two, one. Hey, good morning, New Life. Happy Father's Day to all of our biological fathers, our non-biological fathers, and our father figures. You guys do so much to support our families and friends as well. So huge shout out to all of you. So happy Father's Day to all of you. Well, today's theme is joy, and we get to hear from Angela today. She's going to be teaching us about joy. So I want you to be thinking about what sparks joy for you. 
for me, a lot of things spark joy, but the one thing that I enjoy is thrift stores. I love going on my own, finding that perfect treasure with that perfect price. I will even stop by uh, piles of junk in front of people's houses with free signs on it just to find something. And although my family hates it in the moment, it sparks joy for me in the moment. And then afterwards, when we find that perfect board game or puzzle or shirt, it sparks joy for them as well. They remember that experience. So I hope that you'll be thinking about what sparks joy for you. We have a wonderful service plan today and there's so many different elements to this service, a lot of fun ones, so you will have to stay till the end to see the entirety of it. So we're gonna start off with a wonderful video by Jason Mraz. So let's do this. May you have auspiciousness and causes of success May you have the confidence to always do your best May you take no effort in your being generous Sharing what you can, nothing more, nothing less May you know the meaning of the word happiness May you always lead from the beating in your chest May you be treated like an esteemed guest May you get to rest, may you catch your breath oh, May the best of your todays be the worst of your tomorrows May the road less paved be the road that you follow oh. Well, here's to the hearts that you're gonna break Here's to the lives that you're gonna change Here's to the infinite possible ways to love you I want you to have it Here's to the good times we're gonna have You don't need money, you got a free pass Here's to the fact that I'd be sad without you you to have it all oh, I want you to have it all I want you to have it all I want you to have it all May you be as fascinating as a slap bracelet May you keep the chaos and the clutter off your desk May you have unquestionable health and less stress Having no possessions, no immeasurable wealth May you get a gold star on your next test May your educated guesses always be correct And may you win prizes shining like diamonds May you really own it each moment to the next or May the best of your todays be the worst of your tomorrows Whoa. Or May the road less paved be the road that you follow well, here's to the hearts that you're gonna break Here's to the lives that you're gonna change Here's to the infinite possible ways to love you I want you to have it Here's to the good times we're gonna have You don't need money, you got a free pass Here's to the fact that I'll be sad without you I want you to have it all If you believe it, then anything can happen Go, 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 raise your glasses Go, 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 you can have it oh. I told you, here's to the hearts that you're gonna break Here's to the lives that you're gonna change Here's to the infinite possible ways to love you idea of kicking off our Father's Day service with God singing a love song over us. I say with the best confidence, Happy Father's Day, well-loved child of God. 
No matter what your earthly father was or was not, no matter whether your earthly father is still available and around, you are a dearly loved child of God. And that song whose key phrase is, I want you to have it all, is so apropos because it is the cry of every father's heart towards their kids. I love the fact that it is a natural tie into the series because I don't know about you, but my list of have it all are things like I would love to live in a little bit bigger house. I would love to not drive a clunker car. But this series is called COVID Hacks and it's based on the fruit of the spirit. And I love the tie in between these two concepts of God saying, I want you to have it all and the heart of this series. So it's based on the fruit of the spirit, which is a list of the most desperately needed traits right now under COVID. It's based on a theme verse from Galatians. Galatians 5.22 says this, the fruit of the spirit is love and joy, peace and patience, kindness and goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And those are traits that we desperately need right now, so badly that I'm tempted to spend a day on a theme. All right, God, today I need peace. There is so much uncertainty and I feel so out of control. Can you please give me peace? And what I hear God saying in that love song and in this season through this series is, but Ange, I want you to have it all. Not just a sense of peace today, but I also want to give you the rest of these traits. Or me to say, I need patience. And God be like, okay, yeah, but your dreams are too small. I can give you a sense of joy, even in these circumstances, right here, right now. I love this series because there's so much about this list that we need. So we're drawn in like, okay, today's theme is on joy and I'm not finding joy to be easy. So, all right, preach it, sister. We need some joy. But it's a bait and switch series because the trick is not that you need joy. The trick is that we need a connection to God. And if we will find that, the natural outpouring is that we get the joy that we need. It's a hack. It's a life hack. And it's a bait and switch. And I love it. So we're going to hit different themes every single week. And today, I do want you to feel a sense of joy. And I do help that something that I say today and something that you experience today in this service will give you a lasting connection with joy. But ultimately, the lesson is the same every week all the way through this series. It's tap in to the source of these traits and then hear God say, I actually can give it all to you simultaneously, cumulatively, abundantly, infinitely, instantly. I can give you these things. So welcome to the day on joy and welcome back to the series of COVID hacks. All the way through this series, we've used the analogy of a tree because in the theme verse, God used the analogy of fruit. And it's such a perfect analogy because we are tempted, I would assume you're tempted like me in this, to produce these things ourselves because we need them and we're just used to producing things that we need. But fruit is a natural byproduct of a tree. And you and I in this analogy, we are not the tree. And even better, we're not even the farmer who is charged with tending the tree. We are the apple pickers, the peach pickers, the banana pickers, the mango pickers. We are just the recipients of the fruit. So the most pressing question is not how do I produce more joy in my life or how do I pray in such a way that God can produce more joy in my life? The question is how do we get next to that tree in such a way that we actually feel that the fruit that that tree promises is within arm's reach? And for that, I have an analogy. So here's your behind the scenes look. I was just filming on that couch and what you maybe could or could not see was that I had a faithful companion with me the whole time. I just think this is the perfect analogy for God. And I don't think he's insulted by the fact that I'm comparing him to a Labrador. 
But truthfully, God is our faithful companion and is always at the ready to have this sense of connection, to offer that fruit to us at any time. The key question is us connecting with him. So in the analogy of this tree, what would it take for me to feel, not just be, because the reality is the tree is always there available. What would it take for me to feel close enough to that tree that at any time I could reach out and grab the fruit that I needed successfully? That is about a heart condition in us. That is about a mental condition, a mental connection, not just sharing space. Those of you who have kids at home right now, you know there's a world of difference between feeling a sense of connection together and simply sharing space. <laughs> God is game to share space with us. He is always right there. But our ability to feel capable of reaching out and plucking whatever fruit we need off of the tree that is him is about our intentionality, is about our heart condition, is about how connected we feel to him. So let's do it. Let's press in to this hack because that's the hack. Today our theme is joy, but the hack is not how to get more joy in your life. The hack is to figure out how to get closer to God in such a way that joy is always at the ready. It's always available whenever we want it or whenever we need it. So we're gonna start by having a little bit of time in music. And this is such a perfect opportunity to use the space to foster a sense of connection. For you, that might be singing out loud. It might be tuning into the lyrics. It might be closing your eyes and tuning into the music part of it. Whatever it is, we have an opportunity in the next few minutes to foster a sense of connection so that as we press on through the space that we've created this morning and we start to talk about joy and the, how that particular fruit is available to us, we have already taken advantage of the actual hack. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like. So unexplainable, I, 
about how to foster that sense of connection. Where, when, what resources. If that's the hack, and if we can get this hack right and we get all the rest out of it, let's get it. So for me, for years, 
Starting my day with a sense of connection has been a big deal. It's been my hack. I've had uh, time set aside in the morning to sometimes it's reading my Bible or reading other books or listening to certain podcasts or praying or listening to particular music to launch the day. That's what I've used to foster a sense of connection. For you, it might be different. It might be a matter of, I need to set aside some time. Maybe it's just 15 minutes to get started, to ground yourself with a sense of connection to God so that that fruit is accessible to you. We're gonna post links in the chat of a couple of resources that you might find helpful. Both are simple apps that allow you to set aside a very small amount of time and help engage yourself in a calming way uh, in order to set aside this time, in case that's a helpful, use, uh, useful tool for you. For me, starting my day like this has been helpful, and I've actually ridden that wave of connection throughout the day. But again, COVID is just different, and so I've had to upgrade my system there as well. So throughout the day, I've needed check-in points to reconnect. For you, that might mean that you set an alarm every couple of hours that has you take a couple of minutes. It doesn't take long to just reassess. Can I still feel a sense of connection with God? Is that connection strong enough that if I felt like in this moment I needed one of those fruit that I could just reach out and grab it because it's available to me in proximity? For me, I haven't set an alarm, but I've used my bio breaks. A certain number of times per day, I have to get up and use the restroom and the commute to the restroom, the time in the restroom, the 20 seconds of washing my hands thoroughly and the commute back to my desk is enough time for me to assess where I'm at. Can I feel that sense of connection right there and I reconnect? Or is there a particular fruit that I've discovered, hey, as the day has gone on, I have developed a need for this particular fruit. And it just naturally strikes up the conversation with God. Okay, God, is there anything you can do about that? It's been such a good use of a simple necessity throughout the day. And it's new to me. That's not how I've used my bio breaks in the past, but it's been an incredible COVID hack the hack is not the bathroom break. The hack is connecting back in to the source of these fruits. So let's talk about joy. Assuming that we're practicing the overall hack, which is fostering a sense of connection with God in such a way that it feels like at any moment when I need it, I can reach out and I'm in close enough proximity to him that I can grasp one of these fruits, whichever one I need. Then let's talk a little bit about what it would mean to grasp joy. And maybe the overall hack is just enough. But in this season of COVID, with this much loss, this much tension, this much despair, these particular conditions, it feels like perhaps it would be nice to have a couple of hacks that are just about finding the gift that is joy. Not trying to foster it. But what could we do, in the words of Marie Kondi, what could we do to spark joy? So one of the things that we're suggesting that you do is get next to God and out of him produces this thing of joy. But what I also would like to suggest almost exactly the opposite. And we have to be careful with this one because it's very easy to slip into, I am now fostering a sense of joy instead of fostering a sense of connection to God. But the truth is, it is totally possible that we can connect with God through joy and out of that receive joy. So here's what I mean by that. I'm sitting in my beanbag because my beanbag brings me joy. It is really difficult for me to take myself seriously sitting in a beanbag. <laughs> One, because it makes me feel like a child. And two, because I feel like 100,000 years old when I try to get out of it, which always brings some kind of giggling with it. 
But the truth is joy is all around us if we will tap into it. And the way we can keep this from being a self-reliant journey of tapping into joy and fostering joy ourselves is by spotting joy where it is and acknowledging that God is in that moment. That's so incredibly powerful. A little while back, I saw a TED Talk, which is going to be, a link to it is going to be in the chat. And it's it, the whole theme was where joy is hiding. And it turns out that psychologically, there are things that foster joy in us, whether we're aware of it or not. And one of those things is round objects. <laughs> so there's one point for my beanbag. And certain colors. And certain geometric patterns and, and some symmetry and things like that. It was fascinating. 18 minutes of like, what? But the truth is we are surrounded by things that bring us joy. But the joy can go right past us. And the sense of connection to God can go right past us if we aren't tapping into it. Just like our faithful companion that's always available if we don't actually tap in to the sense of connection, it's lost on us whether it was available to us or not. So I want to spend a couple of minutes figuring out what sparks joy for you. And maybe it will be cleaning out your house and having less possessions. I don't know. <laughs> but I want to spend a couple of minutes where we ask ourselves some personalized questions. So hopefully you've got your pencil and paper nearby you're going to see a series of questions come up on the screen. Just start scribbling stuff down. You don't need to write the whole question down. You just need to start writing down some of the answers. And then we'll come back together and we'll process.
Do you have a few spark joy ideas jotted down? I hope you have a couple that are readily accessible on the internet in like the blink of an eye, maybe even on your phone. I hope you have a whole bunch of free ones. I hope you have some that are available in your everyday life. I hope you have a couple of long form ones that you could invest a little bit more because you felt in a more depleted state. The truth is this list is not the hack. You already know that. The hack is connecting to God in such a way that his proximity is so tangible, you feel like you could reach out at any time and grab the fruit that you need. The beauty with the particular fruit of joy is that we also can have an alternative path to that sense of connection. That by fostering joy in our life, by spotting joy wherever it is, by having these little moments of joy that we acknowledge, that we also have the opportunity to acknowledge that God is in that joy. I don't know about you, but I get to a place where I'm so depleted that I'm having trouble even fostering a sense of connection with God that produces joy. But if I'm that depleted, I also don't have the creative energy to try to figure out how to spark joy for myself. A list like this is so helpful because it does the creative thinking for us ahead of time. But then when we recognize that it itself is not the hack, I can feel a little bit better at the end of a baby giggling video. But it's not going to last more than 10 minutes under these conditions. The hack is actually that I can use that moment where I acknowledge, you know what? Baby's belly laughing brings me joy. And God is in that joy that I can use this to connect to the ultimate hack. That is the thing that I ultimately need. Now, in light of that, you might look back at your list and be like, I don't have enough ideas on here. That's totally fine. In the chat, we're going to put a link to that video we just showed so that you have the ability, if you want to, to go through it slower and pause to answer that question in more ways uh, than you have currently scribbled on your paper. It's your resource to do as you see fit. This morning, hopefully you've got all kinds of ideas of ways that you can foster this sense of connection. Ultimately... It's a whole bunch of resources that point to one place. It's that tree where these beautiful fruit just naturally blossom. As you spend this week in the forced experiment that is COVID, may you also experiment with what it means to foster and feel a tangible sense of connection to the tree that produces this kind of fruit. May you feel love, have access to joy. May you find peace there. May you be given abundant patience, a sense of goodness. May you find your spirit gentle and kind. May you find sustainable faithfulness and the self-control that you need to live your best life. These conditions are something. I'm so glad we have a series where we are talking about COVID hacks, the things that will actually help us not just survive this season of endurance, but that we could actually experience tangibly everything that we need. Which brings me back to where we started, which is God singing a love song over us, saying, I I can't just provide peace for you. I want you to have it all. What a fun time we've had together. We have a couple more fun things planned for you, so don't leave just quite yet. And one of them gets, um, one of them is getting to know your pastor, Angela, a little bit better. So stay tuned for that.
So I just wanted to remind you that even though we're in COVID-19, you might feel like finding joy is difficult and it doesn't come easily, but just know that we wanna partner with you, whether it's through prayer or friendship um, and these COVID hacks as well. That way you can find that spark of joy once again. And hopefully with restrictions being lifted, you're able to find sparks of joy here and there. Well, something exciting that I want to tell you is that we are beating the odds national nationally with our financial impact. And that's all due to you guys and your um, generous giving. And the leadership team has worked really hard to cut our expenses um, everywhere that we can. So there's going to be a giving link that's going to pop up right now in the chat space. We would love for you to continue your generosity by giving. And I know that we all want the church to remain strong that is one of our goals here um, that unites us and so thank you so much for those of you who continue to give generously the online connect card is gonna pop up right now as well if you're new to new life this connect card just allows us to connect with you you can share um, a prayer praise or if you have a prayer request we have a team ready um, and willing to pray for you and alongside you. And then stick around. We are going to see what sparks joy for Angela. So have a great week. Hello, New Life. Happy Father's Day. Let's tell some jokes. Dominic. Yeah. Why don't crabs give to charity? Oh. Because they're shellfish. drummer call his twin daughters and a one and a two Do you know anybody who needs an ark? Nope. Because I know a guy. <laughs> Hi, Eva. Hi. Did you know that the first French fries weren't actually cooked no, in I France? No, I didn't know. They were cooked in Greece. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it! No! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>